anyway, uh, hello me again. Uh, anyway, um, I wanted to say as well that the um, uh, the issues with uh, largely, like I said, um, the only issues which have been uh, generally there in terms of boo boos, uh, in terms of replication. Uh, one other example was. Um, uh, you know, again, it was like, like I said, it was a preliminary challenge, and it got rejected uh, because of the fact that each one should have been treated separately. Say, for example, with the dowsing for water, because they got odds of one in a hundred in the uh, in the preliminary challenge, they should have claimed it. Uh, or was that? Well, yeah, I mean, Randy was conducting it, so I'm pretty sure it was a preliminary challenge. If not, it should have been made one because it would have been, uh, you know, it would have been, uh, it should have been treated as such. And then the dowsing for water should have been attempted as a replication attempt in a full-scale uh, uh, prize claim. But anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, you know, that was a minor glitch up, which was a little unfair on Randy's part. Uh, another one, uh, which was a little problematic, was a preliminary challenge of. Um, of a lady uh, from Britain who claimed to be able to um, uh, guess uh, through applied kinesiology um, what, uh, what bag a crystal was in. Uh, he had dropped a, he had taken a, a crystal that she had selected for the uh, for the patient, dropped it in a bag, and the other four, four bags were containing rat poison. And uh, and he said uh, by chance one in five she should have been able to get uh, the crystal. Now the thing is, what was interesting was that this particular preliminary challenge they only did one trial, and she didn't get it. But my point is, is that the fact that they left it at a one in five chance because of the fact that the preliminary challenge is only one trial, and uh, you know, and it was a one, and it was set up as one in five. If she had gotten it, it still would have been chance, and the replication effect. And since the uh, since the formal claim is supposed to be a replication, not a combined probability like meta analysis, um, you know, that would have been incorrect. Anyway, luckily. Uh, those uh, luckily minor glitches like that have since been. Um, uh, Randy has done some uh, major dramatic changes to the format in the past year since I sent that email in. Um, he hasn't done anything to deal with the experimenter bias issue, but he has changed a lot of other things. Uh, for example, he now demands media presence to. Um, he now demands media presence and scientific backing uh, before he'll uh, take claims, which is um, uh, again a step in dealing with this particular problem. Uh, which you know, I would uh, again, you know, I, that is a step in the right direction of dealing with it. It's not quite far enough, but it does get it does get some degree of working with that. He also said as well, there is a, uh, a mutual uh, talking to people we both trust. Um, the problem, of course, is those. I'm not sure how uh, how far he would actually trust proponents. So that's my that's my concern here. But um, you know, again, uh, that's why I would love to see you know uh, Randy set up the protocols. Then um, you know, Randy have Randy set up the protocols, and uh, and then have uh, you know then have a proponent uh, a proponent test uh, you know uh, like you know have like a bunch of independent high speed cameras that would be monitored by computer, and then the proponent and the skeptic, uh, the proponent and Randy. Both review them later to avoid, um, you know, the so the so-called experimenter side effect, and um, by keeping the um, by keeping the uh, uh, you know Randy or other skeptics out of there during the actual testing time, and of course again preventing the uh, you know preventing the uh, the the claimant from uh, you know fucking up the data, uh, being able to get control of the apparatus or anything like that to screw it up. Um, you know, as long as you've got a competent proponent whose uh, controls are set up by a skeptic, um, if anything, that should uh, provide enough experimenter bias in the proponent's direction, uh, you know, in the in the believer's direction, that the claimant, if they really do have any capability, or if they, you know, what have you, um, they could still perform the, the, the their, they could still probably perform their claim at the proper level, or if not, find a way of uh, you know removing, um, find a way of removing uh, both skeptics and proponents from the local area. Um, you know, or you know, set it up by camera and have the computer say like a, have it fully computerized, whatever the test is. Um, you know, so this way, uh, what happens is that when the proponent, you know, and having both proponents and skeptics watch it later would mean uh, that it could remove the psychological element that way, or something like that, or um, you know, or something like that. You know, uh, find a way of removing the, uh, you know, find a way of removing the um, the the psychological element of the experimenter bias. Uh, I mean, it would be ex it would be highly difficult to do, but it might be doable. And um, you know, for the purposes of trying to want, uh, trying to determine if this variable is really a problem, and trying to determine uh, the one million dollar challenge, it might not be a bad idea. Uh, another way I've suggested on one of my videos is to um, is for James Randi to develop the protocols and then turn it over to a proponent, but secretly actually watch from behind a one way mirror. Um, you know, uh, watch from behind a one way one way mirror. Um, you know the proponent do his, uh, um, you know the proponent conducting the test and the uh, subject do, and the claimant doing uh, trying to produ produce their claim. And this way, Randy could actually observe to make sure the protocol is carried off correctly. But the uh, subject would have no idea that Randy was even there the whole time. Uh, this way, if if not, if, uh, um, and actually just to control two variables. Um, uh, surround in the observation room behind the one-way mirror, um, say Randy, by say uh, four or five believers in Psi, uh, also observing, just to prevent, uh, just to prevent the so-called experimenter Psi effect. 
And um, if after that, you know, if that, if after all that, you know, say Randy effectively surrounded by six propon uh, six proponents, you know, psi proponents, uh, the one conducting the experiment and five surrounding him in the observation room. Um, even if after that, you know, after both possible experimenter bias and experimenter psi effects have been taken out, um, you know, in terms of, you know, skepticism, you know, hampering the uh, results. If after both of those have been removed, the results are still at chance levels, then we know that psi phenomena don't exist for, uh, then we can absolutely say uh, for sure that psi phenomena don't exist. Uh, or at least we can say that, you know, whatever the other positive results are, are you know, are caused by something else other than the, uh, than the psi hypothesis. Uh, or, 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 you know, insert paranormal claim here. Um, the, the idea being that um, the idea being that if we deal with this last variable, it will deal with, uh, you know, one, you know, it will deal scientifically with the absolute last one available. At least that's the only one which I can figure that's left, you know, that's, that's left to be determined. Anyway, uh, that's just my thoughts on that. Um, anyway, the media presence was a good work. Um, also, Randy recently updated the, uh, the challenge requirements. Um, he's now um, he's now actually upgraded the uh, he's now actually upgraded the the levels of uh, requirement for the uh, uh, he's now set it as one in a hundred for the preliminary challenge I believe and the uh, uh, the challenge has now been upgraded as well to the uh, uh, odds of one in a thousand or more I believe uh, for the replication effect you have to be able to uh, do it at a, at a consecutively stronger rate each replication effect. Now, it may be that you may not, uh, now there is a slight problem with that, and the fact is it may only be that the, uh, the person only can say get a, uh, uh, can only say get a very weak marginal effect, um, you know, say, you know, say a specific level. Uh, you know, in my, you know, in, uh, and in my, you know, um, you know, it would be, you know, and that's the, that, you know, that is a problem. Like, uh, you know, I mean, I, like I said, I do admit that they do accept statistical evidence. They have had a couple of, you know, errors in the challenge before. And, that's, and, and uh, you know, um, submitting challenge uh, subjects to peer review, that's the other uh, variable which has not been well enough controlled at the uh, $1 million challenge. Uh, again, uh, they have re received enough criticism that they have done some changes, which I am glad for. But um, I would appreciate just to avoid uh, possible future errors. Um, you know, submitting the uh, submitting the one million dollar challenge experiments for peer review would have two benefits uh, for skeptics. One of which is that uh, we could you know make double sure that you know um, that there might have been a statistical test or or that maybe there was something that was significant at a different level, but you know was incorrectly uh, rejected for some reason. You know, like a type two error. Oh, sorry, no. Damn it, I've forgotten which statistical error that is. Type one error, I'm pretty sure is lo is a uh, uh, type. Type one error is uh, is uh, is incorrectly rejecting and uh, is incorrectly uh, uh, is incorrectly uh, rejecting the alternative hypothesis. Type two error is rejecting the uh, is incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis. So it is possible Randy commit uh, you know could commit a one uh, a type one error um, or or the um, or the experiment may have been inter uh, anyway. Uh, that's the problem with statistics. It's always a little difficult to know which correct which statistical test is the correct one to use in a particular area. I mean that's the reason why uh, you know. That's the reason why. Uh, that's primarily actually where the bulk of uh, of argument is at uh, you know at the foremost levels of actual parasite research in the peer-reviewed journals right now is arguing about whether or not the correct statistical tests were used as well as the proper experimental protocols. Uh, but anyway, uh, that being said, um, you know submitting the Randy exper you know submitting the uh, the one million dollar challenge experiments to peer review would really help uh, you know deal with a whole bunch of other errors. The second thing is if they were approved for publication, they would uh, constitute the file drawer effect. Remember the uh, this the one that uh, skeptics you know for meta analysis. Remember the ones that uh, that um, that skeptics have said you know that there must be unpublished uh, studies with null results hiding that would uh, that would you know nullify the results of say various meta an an analyses. Well, if the one million dollar ch uh, exp uh, challenge experiments were published, those would uh, those would take care of that file drawer effect and effectively dwindle, uh, you know, the significant studies by proponents down to chance results. You know, it would uh, you know it would render them null. Uh, so you know that would take that would be the second benefit. Um, you know, so basically uh, peer review, uh, lack of peer review, which is a more minor one. I'm not really too worried about. Um, but the one which I think is the major of major concern and, and needs to, uh, still needs to be addressed by both the $1 million challenge and by proponent research is this possible issue of experimenter bias. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on it. Um, take it for what you will. Uh, from one skeptic to another, keep up the good work in the debunk. Um, and in my case, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep uh, I'm going to keep working in terms of uh, you know dealing with tighter protocols and the like. So anyway, yeah, toodles.